like the, the framing of how it sort of jumps out from behind the curtain in, in a couple of ways, right? One is that generally investors can't handle those strategies. So they need to be behind the curtain. They need to be close. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. They can't and, take and that line that, of risk. The, yeah. Correct. And that's that's the sort of magic of that sort of description and narrative that I, I really like. It, it's yes, we need to keep them behind the curtain. They're gonna, they're gonna they're, they come out when hark I hear a cannon, they'll jump on stage and they'll they'll do their two second act and then they'll be back behind the curtain again because we can't literally take the line out of risk, as you said. So that's uh, a great way to think about it. And then our, our, our active part of it, so to speak, is that like monthly rebalancing. And that's a, I wish we could rebalance maybe differently in tranches and everything, or even quarterly, depending on the asset class. But like, it's a function of just how we, how we all run our businesses. Like you have monthly inflows and outflows, you rebalance on a monthly basis. So this is like, I'm saying holding all the world's asset classes and rebalancing monthly. And you know, Rod, you didn't get the last one. So once again, I'm teeing you up here. So the, when, you know, we were on our quarterly call recently and one of the things I brought up that I, I think I heard audible groans was like, I'm so happy when we're rebalancing, we're buying bonds here. Like, do I think bonds are coming? Not, I don't care, but like eventually they are going to. And the whole point of a properly diversified portfolio is you are going to hate one of the asset classes as much as people hate bonds right now, as much as hate people hate crypto this month is like, that is the entire point of a properly diversified portfolio. Part of it should make you want to throw up on yourself. Well, look, you saw in a risk parity framework, right, where you had to, you have to rebalance back into your commodity positions. I don't think people have seen the commodity equity line from 2011 to 2020, but it went as low as like 75 percent and had that period in 2013, 2014 was a 50 drawdown month after month after month. And if you're doing a monthly rebalancing and you were happy about buying commodities at this level, yeah. And then you said it to yourself again and again and again. It's just not true. Like it's not necessarily true. And they, this is it going back again to what they're used to, right? They've seen a dip. Of course, it's going to go back. Mean reversion exists all the time, and mean reversion exists until it doesn't for a long period of time, right? The key is in not caring and having everything else be offset, and you can harvest enough mean reversion over time to have a diversification slash rebalancing premium. Um, so it all goes back to this level of humility, right? This this um, attacking the the investment equation from a place of I don't know, and so let's uh, be mechanical, let's be diversified. Isn't it, isn't it also? A